Hello and welcome to another painting tutorial. We're gonna be painting this today and um, focusing primarily on the muscles and the body. It's obviously an adult model so we won't be going into that, those many details but I will link below what's, uh, how it will look like in the end if you want to see it. Like always we're starting with a white primer apply it all over the model and then we're gonna apply uh, our first base color. Um, the most important thing when you're trying to paint realistic is to get the skin colors right. I mentioned this before, most, uh, most of the skin tones that you find on the market don't, don't actually work for uh, realism because they're aimed at uh, miniatures and very tiny models. When your model is very small, you want something that uh, is more, uh, let's say, intense, more colorful, more saturated, that packs a lot of punch. That's not realism, will not perceive it when you're painting uh, or when you're painting something bigger as realism if you're going for something very yellow or very, very saturated, very vibrant. You will have in the description uh, below um, a short video on how I mix my own skin tones and also coming up in the next period you will have a, a more in-depth tutorial on how to create the skin tones. The idea is that for the first first layer you want a reddish darker tone. Think something like a, a little bit darker than the inside of your mouth or like the red meat you buy at the supermarket looks. This is, you, this is what you will want as, uh, as the first layer of the skin tone. Another important thing is to use a uh, light color as a primer. If you're using black, two things will happen. It will first of all desaturate the color, so in order to get the skin color that uh, you have in the pan you have to apply multiple layers. And um, it will just uh, require a little bit more, more work. Also, putting on black something like a, a flesh tone, which has a little bit of yellow, tends to give this effect, which only works if you're painting feet, and uh, also gives some bluish tint, sorry, greenish tint. I'm gonna do the highlights uh, this time around with an airbrush. The idea is that uh, you don't want to go just top to down when you're painting a body because there's a lot of area to cover. You want to go and focus the paint primarily on the raised parts, so like the top of the muscles, the elbows, the knuckles and so on. Go a little bit up to down, but not only up to down. You want to cover it all over. You don't want that effect in which uh, the top is uh, very light and the bottom is very dark, because it will look strange when you have him on the shelf and you're seeing it from uh, a different direction. Yeah. That's why, as you can see, I have applied it all over and I'm letting the previous color peek through only in the more most recent parts of the model. Going forward, we're gonna be applying a little bit more highlight. This time around, I'm moving with a brush because I want it um, more precise. I'm using. Um, the base tone which was already lighter and I'm lighting it even it more. You can use a white or you can use uh, this paint set um, that I'm always recommending because they have uh, amazing colors. And I'm basically creating a third color which is way lighter than everything we, we ever had. Now the whole secret is to use a very big and fluffy brush, ideally natural fibers, meaning those uh, darker bristles, because they keep a lot of paint. You want to wet the brush, you want to wipe it on a, um, on a napkin, and then you want to apply it uh, to the model. 
I'm zooming in this spot just to see some troubleshooting. If you're getting these streaks or if the color is too intense, means you have too, uh, too much paint on your brush. So you'll have to wipe it off on the napkin and then blend out the edges uh, softly. Yeah. Eventually you'll get a hold of it. If you, as you can see, I'm not getting it right from the uh, first time around uh, either. So there's no big deal if you, if you mess it up. One good trick is to start uh, on a body part that's not that uh, apparent. That's why I'm starting on the foot, because uh, even if it's off, let's say, it can be more easily corrected. And you want the, the brush a little bit wet so that you can wipe off uh, any excess. You wouldn't have a harsh patch of, um, harsh patch of paint uh, that you can't uh, wipe off anymore. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. We're gonna be applying the same highlight process all over the body. And uh, as you can see already, because I wiped off uh, most of the paint that's on the brush, it just gives a very subtle effect. Again, you want to focus on the raised parts, yeah, on the very, very raised, uh, raised parts. And uh, this time around, you can go a little bit broader, so on bigger body parts. We're going to be doing a highlight with an even lighter color up next, but for that one, very lightly and very focusing on the very, very, very tips of everything. Yeah, that's ideal. I mean, don't get stressed if you make mistakes. If your uh, brush is a little bit wet, you'll be able to correct them. You can see how I'm going on the first yes. I'm just going on the parts that are raised to already scattered in the model, so you don't need to try to figure this one out.
Now the part in which we apply just the very, very light colors. Again, wet the brush, wipe it off very well. And lightly, barely touching the model, uh, dry brush it all over. But very lightly touching the model. As you can see, it's uh, at this moment where it's starting to pick up with the very light colors just the very, very tips of uh, whatever is sculpted, like the veins and, uh, and everything else. Moving on to the freckles and the skin defects, uh, this is where it starts to get interesting and we're pushing that realism uh, uh, onto the model. What you want to do is use a stiff brush and um, a color you can see, it's a brown, reddish brown. I'm using a gloss version, it's from Citadel. And uh, using your nails, so um, uh, you need to, to use your nails and get a little bit dirty on this one. You just want to speckle all over, but wipe immediately with a sponge. The whole idea with the freckles is that they need to be uneven. They don't, they can't be that strong because it's a small model. If you're painting a female character, you should do them even softer barely barely uh, flick your nails so it's not a strong movement i am getting uh, paint on the model but it's soft you see i'm getting small small speckles and i will be wiping them off also some people do it with an airbrush i don't really prefer an airbrush because the result is too uniform and um, it will look fake it will look fake to the eye it will be a challenge getting the right brush for it so a toothbrush may work or a small stiff brush and do some practice on a piece of paper is that's the only advice i can give you it's a movement that you need to get around it and get used to it at some po moment you you'll just get it yeah uh, do some practice on a white piece of paper and uh, try different colors try different brushes see what gets an effect that actually looks like freckles this is what you want to get but very small very tiny and very soft yeah. for the bodies especially the male bodies you can apply them all over and a little bit heavier for the females as i mentioned you want to go a little bit softer that will be the main difference when you're painting a body between a male and a, and a female for females, you want to go with softer colors, softer transitions. Now this is something I don't normally do, but because um, in the movie it, uh, 
it was quite, how can I say, uh, uh, tanned skin. I'm applying a tan glaze with uh, tan glaze, which means a yellowish, uh, pretty much wash or glaze, all over the model. Obviously, let it dry afterwards. Yeah, so just give a nice tint. Uh, you can go with any green, uh, green wash. If you're not using a glaze and if you're using a color, you may want to to wipe some of it off. Uh, no matter what you use, if it's pulling anywhere. You want to pick it up with a brush, you know, wipe off the brush on a, on a napkin, a napkin, and uh, pick up the excess or wherever it's pulling. The whole idea for realism is to get um, an uneven skin tone, but with soft transitions, so you can't have very harshly defined uh, shadows or very harshly defined muscles. That will look like a comic book or that will look like a cartoon. The transitions are soft between the colors. They are still defined, but they are soft. And it's uneven. I think that's the ma main takeaway if you want to, uh, to go for realism. If you look at your hand, if you look at your arm, you'll see that you actually have many colors that are not in a realistic pattern. So now with the glaze, just apply the glaze all over and let it dry. And you can see the effects, this is where we want to be right now, because now we're pretty much finished with the uh, with, uh, paints. And we're gonna move on to the watercolor pencils, it's the same process I uh, seen using for portraits. And then we're gonna move on to the pastels. I left this part in, it's not necessarily related to the bodies, but uh, dark purple pencil, watercolor pencil is your best friend to define the face and the lips. Again, I prefer the watercolor pencils because if you make a mistake or if you accidentally apply too much, you can just put uh, uh, wet your brush and uh, and wipe it off. So uh, you actually can't make a mistake. And 
and um, also we're going to be using the same color to define the nipples. I didn't like where they were sculpted in because I thought they were too low because his arms are on the side but uh, eventually I ended up painting them too high so if you're painting this model they need to be lower. I will probably correct it eventually. That nipple I couldn't get right, that's why you see me struggling a little bit. I didn't like how it looked, it looked off all the time. Um, as I mentioned, they still need to be a little bit lower, even uh, taking into account the position of his arms. It's okay to make mistakes, I mean, don't stress about it. And as I mentioned, that's why you want to use pencils. Yeah, I wiped it off uh, five times yeah, until I got it uh, uh, to look how, how I want it. And you can play up with the intensity and everything else. Now, what's uh, really gonna be helpful for the water, uh, with the watercolor pencils is to define the veins. You want to use a light blue, so don't go into color theory, is it a cool tone character, is it a warm tone character. Just go with blue because it looks nice. And wherever you have veins either sculpted or you know they should be, or you think it will look nice, just uh, draw them on with the pencil. The main advantage of the pencil is that it will be a little bit uneven and uh, you won't have a straight uh, blue line. Again, you don't need to go with washes or glazes and do like a hundred layers in order to get the same effect. You can see already that the veins look very natural and like peeking from under the skin already. So it's one step and done and the effects are, um, are quite nice and this is what will, uh, will help your model a lot. Now, this is an optional step. I don't normally tend to do it, but I just wanted to do it on this one. 
using watercolor pencil i'm shading the uh, the hairy areas on the face we will be shading with pasta like we normally do uh, later on but i just wanted to give it a, a little bit more punch because the watercolor pencil will settle into the recesses i don't want to use too much paint on his beard because it is dark but not that dark so i didn't want to bother with it that's why i prefer to use the watercolor pencil as a wash and it's already settling in and then we're gonna come with the pastels and the, um, and the black part Going to the regular pastels, you know, I'm using always this mix of dark purple and uh, and a little bit of brown. Brown primarily when you're on the perimeter, let's say the margins of the body, and purple, this dark, dark purple on everything else. This is the point where you can define the muscles additionally, if you feel that you want to. As you can see, I did do that for my models, so just whenever it's the crevices of the muscle definition you can just go with this purple because this pastel is very soft and again it's uh, you go once and it's done you don't need to bother with multiple layers um, and the transition is very soft that's the most important thing and this is why i love pastels actually you're, you're getting that softness that sells the the realism And this is how you should be after this. The next steps are the ones that I'm normally using for uh, for portrait painting, uh, portrait painting as well. So you want to put some colors and again unevenness in the skin with red and with oranges, especially that in the movie he looked more yellow. It was probably just the uh, movie editing, let's say, because. Uh, the actor is not that yellow in real life but anyhow the reds make a lot of difference so especially on the body you want to apply reds in a patchy and uneven manner that's why i'm using this very battered, uh, battered brush and um, i'm going all over man there's nothing to it just apply it to you you don't want how can I say patches of red that are very obvious again softness go with soft transitions soft colors Because it is a big model now, I'm applying the orange, the tan color, yeah, let's say with a big brush, applying it all over just to give like a hue, another hue of, uh, of a tan.
Now, for everything that has hair on it, whether on the body or on the face, you want to go and make it cool tone. For uh, this size of paintings, uh, this dark, darker greenish tone is ideal. So you don't want to go gray. It will look strange and it will look too, too stark. You want just to give it this greenish tint. So wherever the skin meets the hair or wherever there are areas with hair, you want to, to use this, uh, this green. This includes the body, and that's why we'll be shading um, shading certain areas of his body with uh, with the same green, where we know he, sh he should have a little bit more hair. It's not a model that has sculpted hair, so we won't be bothering with uh, drawing individual hair lines or, or something like this. But we'll give the impression by making those areas cool tone and with this green tint. Now you want to seal the model and obviously do anything else like the eyes and everything, I've done that offline, because you'll be applying decals, so there will be a separate decal video, I'm not going into it, you can basically do your own using decal paper, but you need the model to be sealed properly before that, because you have been using pastels, so you, you can't use water on something that has pastels. You need to seal it, put on the decals, and uh, then seal it again. I let in the hair part because doing his hair is actually very easy. I'm using this Zentri Dust from Citadel which is very nice for uh, blonde hair, anything blonde hair, if, um, if you're painting something like this. And uh, it's three steps that can be two, so basically you'll be applying the Zentri Dust uh, all over. Then we're gonna shade with a brown. I'm using a grassic earth shade always, also from Citadel, but any brown, any brown or if you're doing something like the witch or you can even go with nano or something, uh, let's say towards green. And at the very end you want to apply a little bit of highlight. For blonde hair I like to use gold color, so I took inspiration from Hot Toys and how they do their blonde hair, uh, because I actually really like that effect. You don't need to use gold, you can use something, let's say, like a lighter yellow if you don't like the gold. Um, or you can actually just leave it with the base and the shade and it will look good enough.
Yeah, and that's it. I mean, now you just assembly the model. And uh, this is how it will look like. You have at the very end, I have linked the, um, let's say, explicit model, if you are curious how it, will, how it looks fully. But that's pretty much it. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy it.